Hi and welcome to helicopter training videos. Uh, essentially weight and balance is looking at the helicopter and how you've loaded it with fuel, people and cargo and is that helicopter within safe weight limits and center of gravity limits. This is something you'd have to do every time you fly so um, get used to it and, and uh, practice this. Uh, we'll have you go through this. Uh, this first one we're going to be dealing with definitions. And in part uh, two and three we'll cover how to actually calculate or use a graph to find weight and balance and how to manage weight and balance. First definition, empty weight or otherwise known as basic empty weight. That's the weight of the helicopter empty with the, any installed equipment and unusable, unusable fuel. And some aircraft also include full operating fluids and they mean hydraulic fluids and full oil. The R22 um, does include oil in its what it calls empty weight. You can check the POH for whichever helicopter you're flying to confirm their definition. And the actual specific empty weight for the helicopter you're going to use will be found in the uh, POH that's inside the aircraft and has got a weight and balance specifically for that aircraft. Typically an R22 Beta 2 is around 850 pounds is their uh, empty weight. Payload. Okay, that's anything we're going to load into this empty helicopter, so that'll be the pilot any passengers, any baggage, any fuel, and also maybe operational fluids as we talked about whether they're included or not you can check with the POH. Gross weight. This is the weight of the helicopter's empty weight plus any payload you've put on it. So for example let's say there's an R22 that's weighing about 850 pounds empty weight and we laid it, load it up, load it up with about 500 pounds of uh, payload, people and fuel. We're looking at about 1,350 pounds and that's its gross weight. Max gross weight. This is defined in the POH and it will say for example in the Robinson R22 Beta 2 max gross weight is 1,370 pounds. So our empty weight plus our payload cannot exceed 1,370 pounds or the maximum gross weight. Minimum gross weight. Uh, some helicopters have a minimum gross weight in their POH and that is because if the aircraft loses engine power and has to use auto rotation to keep the rotors turning as the helicopter is falling through the air and that, uh, that airflow is turning those rotors if the aircraft isn't heavy enough then the rotors won't turn fast enough to maintain a safe RPM so in the R22 for example the minimum allowable weight for safe auto rotation is 920 pounds. So useful load, what that is, is basically you take your max gross weight minus your empty weight and that's your useful load, is how much can we carry. In the R22 Beta 2 it's about 500 pounds um, because the max gross weight is 1,370 and its empty weight is roughly 850 so that's about 500, 520 pounds. So useful load, what that is, is basically you take your max gross weight minus your empty weight and that's your useful load is how much can we carry in the R22 Beta 2 it's about 500 pounds um, because the max gross weight is 1,370 and its empty weight is roughly 850 so that's about 500, 500 datum datum is an imaginary line it's established by the manufacturer and it's used as a uh, reference point for measuring uh, when we're working out loading positions for weight and balance. Uh, in the R22 that imaginary line or datum is a hundred inches forward of the main rotor shaft and that means that all our calculations will be dealing with positive numbers which is easier, easier for the math. And if you look at this example here we have other datum examples in other helicopters uh, and the one at the top is the datum is actually on the mast so you've got positive and negative numbers to deal with depending which side of that datum you're working with and then the helicopter below that which looks like a long ranger that datum starts at the very front of the helicopter structure main part of the uh, the nose there so any loading of that helicopter will be a positive only and then that one at the bottom is is where the R22 datum is as we said is about 100 inches, for, uh, 100 inches forward of the uh, main rotor mast and dealing with R22 horizontal datum, data will always be positive. Arm. That's the distance of the load from the datum 
it's uh, where we're actually putting the load, how far away is that from the datum, and it's measured in inches. And uh, as we've said, some helicopters have datums in different positions, so it can be a positive or negative number. The R22, for example, if we were going to deal with loading a passenger, the distance of the passenger seat's um, arm from the datum is 78 inches, and we find that in the POH. Moment. Moment is a combination of the weight and the position of a load, and it's calculated by taking the weight times the arm, and it's measured in pound inches, and again it can be positive or negative. So for example, um, to work out uh, the position, uh, sorry, the moment of a passenger, we would take their weight, say they're 200 pounds, and then we'd time them by, times it by the arm, which in the R22 is 78 inches, and that would give us the moment. Okay, so here we have a quick moment example. Uh, we have 200 pounds, which is 10 inches from the fulcrum. So its weight is 200 pounds, its arm is 10 inches, 200 times 10 equals 2,000 pound inches. Now, if we look on the right hand side, we have a heavier weight, but it's closer. So we're going to kind of look at how weight and arm combined makes a difference to the moment. So now we have a 400 pound weight, but it's only five inches away, so there's less uh, leverage. So 400 times a five inch arm comes out 2,000 pound inches, which is exactly the same as 200 pounds at 10 inches. Center of gravity. So this is the point where the helicopter will be balanced. And we find that by mathematically by taking the total moments, all of the moments added up, divided by the total weights, all the weights added up. And that gives us a number in inches, which is the position from the datum of the center of gravity. And this CG icon is used to depict the center of gravity. Okay, so we've covered all the definitions. Now in the next video, part two of three, we'll talk about how to actually determine center of gravity uh, and wait to check whether it's within limits. We're, we're using a calculation method and a graph method. Okay, so if you want more information, you can look in the Robinson R22 POH or Pilot Operating Handbook. There, look in the limitations and weight and balance sections. You can also look in the Rotorcraft or Helicopter Flying Handbook in the Weight and Balance section, and then ASA Helicopter Oral Exam Guide and ASA Prep for the Private both have weight and balance sections for you to uh, work on. Uh, the FAA also has a really pretty good aircraft weight and balance handbook that you can download and print for free if you go to www.faa.gov forward slash library slash manuals you'll find that and many other manuals in there and then finally I'd recommend you just practice doing weight and balance problems there's plenty of these questions in your written uh, you will have to do a manual one probably uh, for your check ride um, so yeah get, get, get used to this get familiar and uh, see you on the next video